This individual is highly involved in big brands, art, and also the fine art. His talk is called How the Fine Art World is Responding to NFTs. It's a very interesting topic. Please give a warm welcome to Max Walker Williams. Hi, everybody. Uh, so my name's Max Walker Williams, and I own a company called Utopian Lab. And Utopian Lab basically works with some of the largest brands and companies in the world. Um, and we help them create NFTs of their products, of their um, we help them create uh, NFTs of their products, of their services, and we also help them uh, create content, which is it helps them engage with their customers in a way that's never been possible before. Uh, in, a, in a way that's never been possible before. And we do that through NFTs, through AR, which is augmented reality, VR, which is virtual reality, and through metaverse spaces. And one of the things I've learned from wor working with these incredible uh, and massive brands is that the future for the NFT space is absolutely bright. Um, and because whether we like it or not, there's an incredible concentration of money, of talent, brain power, in massive corporations and brands. And as they enter the NFT space, everyone in the ecosystem benefits from that incoming innovation, money, investment, and everything else that comes with those big, uh, those brands. To put this in perspective, um, the entire NFT industry last year was worth $18 billion. So across all platforms, all of NFT sold and bought totaled $18 billion, and one of our clients turned over $19 billion. They weren't in the NFT space last year, and they're gonna be in the NFT space next year. And they turned over a billion dollars more than the entire NFT space. So it kind of really gives you an example, a visceral example, of how much growth and potential there is in the cryptographic technology. I must say, when talking to some people in the space, there's a lot of tribalism in crypto with my projects better than yours. And there's also some people who believe that there isn't a place for big brands, fine art, the old establishments. And it's funny, because when I actually speak to them and we drill down into it, a lot of these people are the very same that believe in decentralization, in transparency, openness, um, and then at the same time want to police who can and can't come into the space. And I think it's really short-sighted, because I think the net benefit to the NFT industry is, is far outweighs any of the potential negatives from these massive companies and the old established art world coming into it. Um, when we look at fine art, I don't necessarily just mean uh, you know, old oil paintings, uh, or oil paintings that are incredibly old and incredibly expensive. Fine art takes a lot of different um, forms. And so very shortly, I believe that, and in the same way that NFTs aren't just JPEGs. And so if you imagine a company like Rolex, for example, and they're shortly going to be selling digital watches, like Apple do, and the band on the watch is digital. And so you walk into the Rolex shop, and you say, I want to buy the day-day entry-level Rolex. And they say it's 6,000 pounds. And you buy the watch, and you download the app. And on the app are six factory setting colors. And so you can have your uh, Rolex watch green, blue, pink, red, whatever. And then you go and meet a friend who's got the same watch, and you notice that their band is bright pink with yellow spots. And you say, well, I haven't got that setting. What's that? Well, Rolex did a collaboration with the Banksy uh, establishment or with the Andy Warhol Foundation or with Jay-Z and, and, and J-Lo, and they created 10 uh, limited edition Rolex uh, watch strap brands, and they sold for a million pounds each. And I say, wow, you know, I've got to have it. And so I send you the crypto via the wallet, peer-to-peer, -peer, straight in front, just in the bar. You receive it. You send me the NFT through a smart contract, trustless, unless we're good friends, of course. And then your watch automatically drops back to the factory setting of, of standard blue color or green or whatever it may be. And my watch turns into the colors that I've got. But then we leave the bar and we get in your Tesla. And the color scheme in your Tesla is one I've never seen before. And again, you know, what's this? Well, Tesla have done a collaboration with whoever it may be, and they've done a, one of 1,000 or 50 limited edition colors of this Tesla. And I can pay you for it, sat in your car, you give it to me, and next time your Tesla goes back to factory setting, and next time I get into my Tesla, it's updated, and again, the colors are in there. So fine art and the NFT world 
are going to do some amazing things. And I think it's a fantastic opportunity for anybody in the space already, whether you're an artist or a creator or a developer. But there is something, there are a couple of rules with the corporate game, if you like, with the big companies. And you have to ensure that you future-proof yourself and your work, whether you're a coder, a developer, an artist, whatever it is you're doing, you, one of the golden rules is that massive companies have a criteria and you have to meet it. And so, for example, at the moment, everybody's super gluing themselves to cars, the floor, sitting in the road. And although I believe in, in what they're fighting for, and I think we all believe that obviously, you know, the environment is so important and climate change, you know, is, is a real thing. Um, if you are developing or working on a platform that doesn't meet the criteria of large companies, then it's a non-starter. If you're turning over $19 billion, you don't need to be in any space, okay? They do at some point, they need to future-proof themselves, but right now, they're not in a desperate rush. When you're making a billion net profit, you're not in a desperate rush, and they take their time. And so if you are on a project or on a platform that doesn't meet the eco-credentials of this business, then it's a non-starter. It doesn't matter how good you are. So it's just a side point that you should uh, be aware of. And imagine you've got a, a Nike have just uh, uh, submitted a patent for digital trainers. So they'll be able to display uh, photos and video. And so you'll have Conor McGregor knocking out this guy, rumble in the jungle, and the person who owns that six second knockout will use NFTs to create a thousand of them. And then in collaboration with Nike, you'll be able to download them on the app and have the knockout punch that, of your favorite or the slam dunk in basketball or whatever it may be on your trainers. Uh, for, for, to social signal, how wealthy you are, et cetera, uh, and to enjoy for, you, for yourself. I think we're going to see more and more, uh, and this is the other thing that's really exciting about the NFT space for me, is that we're going to see, it's a perfect storm, we're going to see more and more uh, institutions, companies, large brands entering the space. And the reason that's going to happen is not just because the cryptographic technology that the NFT sits on is undeniable, but it's because of the way the next generation coming through now values and sees value in digital content. And so my son is 10, and he's always saying, Daddy, can I have V-Bucks? Daddy, can I have V-Bucks? And Ubisoft, uh, one of the largest, if not the largest, software gaming software company in the world with 10,000 in-house developers, did a, uh, did a, took a poll of young boys in America, teenage boys, and they asked 2,000 of them, would you rather have $600 to spend on clothes, shoes, chocolate, whatever you want, or would you rather $600 worth of V-Bucks to spend on a red cape or whatever that doesn't exist? And 88% of them said they'd rather have the V-Bucks. So in my son's mind, and, and, and that's not even an NFT, it's an unlimited number of, 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 of items in these games. But when you think about it, what's the difference? My friend wants to, a, a gun that's diamond studded because his hero and his mate's heroes in that game has got the same gun. And he wants to meet up with his mates and he wants to be part of that gang and he wants to be in the, in, in the club. And so he wants to buy the gun. So he doesn't, there's no question in his mind, it's not even a question that that gun, that cape, whatever it may be, has that real world value. And that might sound alien or, or, or not to this crowd especially, but when I'm generally speaking, people sort of laugh at that and they can't get their heads around it. And it is unusual and it is strange. But then you consider that my 10-year-old son and his mates, you know, are going to be the new director of the NHS, the leader of the free world, you know, an American president. And so as these kids come up who aren't questioning, there is no question that digital content has value and they come through and then they're PMs, MPs, you know, directors of huge companies. It's going to be such an exciting time for anyone who's building in the space now, providing that they future-proof themselves, as I said. And so the other thing that's happening aside from that, I've only got a, a minute left, but the other thing that's happening aside from that is through COVID, we all have done a Zoom or a team call, and that technology is getting better and better. And when people on stage previously were talking about the metaverse, for a lot of people I speak to, they're like, what, what is the metaverse? Is it just computer games? But if you think about Zoom, you're having a meeting on Zoom, and it's okay, there, there are a lot of benefits, you know, both in terms of not having to get a flight, the environment, and so on. But there's also the time saving and everything. And, and, and yes, it's not as good as a, a meeting in real life in a lot of ways, but the time saving means that they, for me, the benefits outweigh the ne negatives. And as that becomes a real thing, and rather than just looking at each other on a computer screen, I can stand next to you in 3D. I'm gonna want art on the walls. I'm gonna want furniture. I'm not just gonna wanna stand in a square empty room with you having a meeting. We're gonna wanna sit at chairs. And, and so fashion and um, a design of of chairs and tables, and everything that we value in the real world will become equally, if not more valued, 
uh, in, in the new digital world. It's Goldman Sachs have just paid £115,000 for a table that doesn't exist. But of course they have. It was a one-of-one one designed by Ferrari, backed by NFT technology, and they want a social signal to people like me when I meet them that they've got plenty of money. And so the value, the tech, is all undeniable, and we are heading towards an incredible time to be alive. Thanks ever so much for listening.